Hello. So, my name is Elio Castro. I'm working from Cariad, Volkswagen company, like James always remember there. But we are basically the software division of the Volkswagen company there. And I was talking about something that we've been talking in open source tooling group about eight years now, I think, that since I joined it there. This, this is basically the same talk that we evolve in from time to time there. Then I'm glad that Philippe passed to me. Philippe was not able to come here. And then there you go. What are you talking about this? What is open source automation there? It's mostly automation. It's not only open source. It's exactly what everyone is doing. What are you talking about here now? It's about, we're talking about tools, we talk about trends, we talk about insights. That's exactly the things that is happening right now. It's, it's happening since long time, but it's happening again right now because it's, it's changing, all evolving there. It's all the time. So this, this is whole credit goes uh, by the open source tooling group because we've been working for a long time. This is, this is not a work of one single hand, this is the work for several hands from several years. We are just in improving what we're talking about. Okay, why open source compliance tooling there? As I said that, it's dog fooding, eating exactly what we do there. We've been doing there, this is as free as freedom, never ask it anything about to anyone, never actually try to sell anything. It's mostly because we have a necessity, we made it this and we created in this time. Why that's exactly the right size enable or the key to right size automation for the open chain. The tools itself growing for a long time as independent tools there. We are separating things from the scanning part for cataloging and software editage, everything was growing independently. But why it's growing this way? Because at a certain point in the time, there's none tools available, no commercial tools, no open source tools. It's basically a necessity that's starting to appear inside companies there. So this is started inside companies to be created there. And then the trends. So what is about the next trend? So Philippe said to us, uh, uh, from Philippe von Scancode said that there's supposed to be the third wave of this one. I disagree a little bit. So of course I remixed the talk about this. That is about another wave and another, 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 next, next. Because one thing happens to the other. So the first one that I changed a little bit, that's because the first one is inner source. This happens inside the companies doing a tool that doing necessities. You can look in for exactly Foslight and SW360 born inside LG and Siemens because they needed something that doesn't exist in the market. You can, you can think in about scanning tools that in a, at some point doesn't exist in anywhere, but someone asked about what is happening there like a scan code or tools for orchestration like ORT that born inside here because it doesn't have anything there. The second one was the commercial applications. We can see a lot of commercial tools that understand that this necessity existed there and jump on these things and starting to provide S-bombs or some way to scanning, some way to catalog of software, good or bad, but that's it. The third wave was exactly when we started a few years ago, talking about compliance and legal. Just remember, this is before the whole talking about vulnerability scan, supply chain wars. This is the first thing that coming before. And the next wave is about application security there because the bridge is coming between the, the both two. So we can now see that compliance and, and legal tools crossing borders with application security and vulnerability tools and the resulting document usually provide the both information. So we have a single data. So that's something that is a trendy thing. And the next one, security, of course. Uh, as bonds and everywhere and but for what? That's exactly a good question because most of the people are producing now because someone is requesting a document. Someone said to the someone that the ex 
the bombs, existing view of materials. Someone said the view of materials can be softer view of materials. Someone said that it could be a text document, but barely few people can actually connect everything as exactly what is a softer view of materials. What is the content of this? What is there? So this is a lot of things that few can process then there. Then license compliant is not yet solved. That's true because we'll never be actually solved. Think about uh, two groups of lawyers and try to make them agree with each other. It's obvious, it's different for everyone. It's the, the, the decisions is completely simple and different. So what happens there, we still a lot of work of automation to generate there. We don't have a requirements for the logical steps for automation. So everyone at this exactly moment right now, it's starting to write different pipelines the way automations, because people say, we've been using automation on, let's say GitHub, GitLab, something for, for a while, everyone understand that's not true. We are basically right now cracking the code about what automation is for general things. Every time and every day, even people say, we are using Docker almost 10 years, and still have people asking how to do something there inside automation. And we are at the same stage for the license because it's more, com more complex than simple automation that build your code, generate a binary and release. So that's orchestration for many tools like ORT or it, it, we even need to orchestrate ORT inside the whole pipeline that using multiple tools. So that's the next step. Open data and data sharing will happen. And in two levels, uh, we are not, it's not single open source like, oh, we are, every data goes to open source, everyone is using the same. No, because the, this is actually the, the difference between uh, the open source tooling itself and the resulting data. The data is the thing that is proprietary from the company. This is the actually matters. The tool that we are using is irrelevant as long as the data is protected. But there's data that can be shared and common as open source. Doesn't matter which company you are, everyone is still using the same glibc, the same zlib, zlib code. It's the same for everyone. So why companies think this is a proprietary data? It's an open source library. Everyone is using, it's, everyone is scanned. So that's uh, the reason that existing projects like clearly defined and the Ocelot, we have a peer reviewed for plenty of people to doing this. Uh, just to say, if anyone wants to interrupt me every time, please raise the hand and let's do it. So, that's exactly the last sentence, as I said. Everyone wants it, but everyone wants to control it. And why? Why we want to control open source infor information that is uh, available to everyone? Why do you have this special in, the, in your case? And that's it's costly, it costs money, it costs time, and maybe you're just doing wrong. And that's the last point, centralizing or decentralizing. I can tell you later about that the, the probably going is like have a decentralized, centralized model. Yes, sounded wrong, but I will explain this later then. Okay, so this is exactly a very curious point and nobody asked this before. This is a very good that Philippe put there. Software health quality sustainability is not there yet, but the moment that we start, and everyone can answer there, the moment that we start to put in the legal information documents, even not completely write other things, someone jumps from your company and says that, but can you see how is the quality of your development, other things? This is the small question that is, sounds completely disconnected, but lead to this. That's what will happen there. It's an, it is an extrany thing. This is you coming to you, doesn't ask there. I can have a simple example of a sustainability that comes from our industry in a special uh, auto automotive. So that's one in, in Europe, we have one European law called the uh, UNCE 155. It means that it's for security itself. We need to keep the software in-house and provided during the time that the product is on, on the market. The product in the case of the car it means that at any point, any auditor want to comes to us there, in the timeline of the car is, the, is available on the market, we need to have the source code. Then you can say, okay, but I'm using open source, I have a LinkedIn in my SVOM pointing to 
the internet there, the origin of codes. Is anyone here can guarantee that the same URL, the same website, and the same source code will be in the next 10 years that's in the internet? No, you can't. So it means that we need to take care about sustainability, we need to take care about what we have and control everything there. It, this is something that will come to everyone. So, FOSS GUI web applications are still badly missing. Yes, every single application that's, we don't have a kind of counterparts. We don't have some kind of dashboard to control all the things. And we are replicating and duplicating our work in several places and, and tools still not even doing yet. So this is, is a very key point that we need to there. This is analysis of builds will display source only scans. That's, that's a curious thing because right on the last two months, one word uh, pops every time when this is talking about. Can you say what? Chain? I apologize, I was crash Yes, you see, <laughs> this is the boring talk. Yep, but on the slowly analysis of the building barriers, which thing that you people are talking and asking about the last two months? Oh my God. Uh, everyone has mostly been suffering from the fact that we can't set up or understand stuff. Yeah, so yeah, the second thing is that everyone is asking, oh, can you use AI to do that? Oh, the AI thing? Yeah, we, we can't. Sorry, it's, uh, AI is limited even this today. No, this is, uh, um, Philippe already explained it, that talks about this, a very detailed spot, how actually this, we can have limitation on that region of AI, and you can have really, really bad understanding what is the resulting of this thing. So it's very dangerous now. And dependency track is not yet solvable. And someone will raise their hands, but we have package managers. We understand package managers, all the things. Yes, we understand package managers. We can understand everything about Gradle, builds, or Python. Uh, but let's say that large companies like SpaceX using something called Bezel, or Android is moving to Bezel. Bezel is mostly a completely new build system that doesn't have a formal package manager, meaning that we don't have a proper understanding of the pack or de de dependency. And if you're using C++ environment, like 99% of the embedded uh, worlds, now Rust, of course, but no, we don't have it. Unless you actually spend time writing Conan packages that people sometimes don't like it, or you have an artificial synthetic package like SPDX, but we don't have dependency in tracking there. There's a question there. Yeah, question. Regarding the analysis of the environment, do you mean analysis as in looking inside and trying to work out whether there's a problem? Or do you mean that as aspects improve and we get attestation of how things were built, we would not need to do the analysis of things from source code being in an no, no, we need to do analysis of source codes, and we, we cannot go to the, the less level of binary part because the binary lies to you. Doesn't matter what is, you, you can go as far as, as far as possible in the binaries there, but you can have optimizations, other things that not tells everything to you. We don't even don't tell exactly how actually you are dependencies for build other things. I can and a very good example, and that's a very key important thing today about binaries is, is Docker, Docker uh, scanning there. Docker itself, you try to scan in the binary, and there's a lot of uh, vendors and everyone says that you can do everything, is scanning there and you can get information, view of materials, no, you can't. You can actually pick in things from the outside there. We need to treat the Docker itself as the source origin like Docker file and analyze one on top of other layers instead of going to the binary because the binary will give you the wrong answer for this ones. We can lie a lot of this. So the things about is there's is slowly the dependencies moving, there's the binary together with, uh, with the source code, then you can have the results of these things. That's been... Okay, moving there. Best tools are uh, free or open source there. Yes, well, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not because we are doing these tools, it's just because we started these tools and we know what they're actually doing. And this and the, it was never guided for a direct commercial interest. So we're actually thinking, right, but it's hard. It's really, really hard. So we are doing exactly most of everything there, but this is this, the, the issues there. It's far to be ready. 
we have duplications of the tools. And we need a lot of work yet, because just right now we are cracking everything. It's we, we simply don't know yet about everything. There's too much things that we didn't know until actually it starts to appear that companies need or everyone needs them. But we are getting there. So we have most of the things, but still, still not ready. We're far from there. So poor data quality. That's uh, something that is everyone is suffering there. So yeah, vulnerability in package databases are the, the new rush. And everyone is trying to do something there. And this is exactly the dangerous problem. We are not guiding for anything because we are not having this anything. So everyone is trying whatever they think that they can do, providing with same data, everything there. And simply we don't have the clear right answer. There. It's, it's, it's a dangerous moment about the poor data quality. The trends right now is how to refine this. So that's a say that's coming from this. One of the things, this is created by an XB, is package URL that's automatically become adopted, and why for that? It's because we really, really didn't have any way to actually express a proper way from the package. We created some crazy numbers about every company is trying to say, oh, the version is this way or the other way, there, and nobody before that's coming with a simple solution for this. So now it's, been, it's becoming a standard in the way that you can adopt it everywhere. And it's pretty, pretty much simple there. But this is one of the things that explain the trends about exactly what we needed in the goals there. This is so badly needed, it's so simple, that's a small, small idea. And this is coming later. So this is coming, that's I asked about when talking with Philippe about this. Companies actually talking about projects. Companies don't talk about components. Companies don't talk about specific package there. This is just a part of the entire project. That's a lot of information but we don't have a way to actually single project ID. And this is actually a, something that you are asking there. Even that you consider that your company has some kind of different project, you, every company has suppliers, suppliers has other suppliers, and we simply cannot track it down this in a simple way. So every single company creates their own method or some way or some project database or even created for multiple different departments inside the company that don't talk to each other because companies are big then in the end, the projects are never had the same tracking number, same origin. So we need this there, and you need to create there. And this is, and package URL provided the way that is to, to prove that components packages can be done in this way. So why not we just elevate this for the level of projects inside there? So insights, share the data. This is, this is pure open source tooling group. We always talk about sharing the data. This, we're not talking about sharing your company's uh, secret data or confidential data. We're talking about sharing exactly what everyone's sharing is open source there. Which is uh, the quality, coming back to the previous slide, the quality of the data, the quality of what you're producing, it comes from Several factors, including the ones that's peer review. We cannot do it peer review inside your company because simply people don't care. If, one's, if one is doing, why they are spending time of others to do it? So it means that you need to rely somewhere else or trust completely in one single peer review for yourself. And thinking about that this is not uh, a project that's um, Open source compliance is not appealing to a regular open source developers. It's appealing to basically companies. It means that the only way to, sh to actually have this peer review it is with other companies, even your competitors. So what has prevented us to do it, uh, to do in sharing data of the open source information there? So this is exactly what the things there. If you want, everyone wants to share the data and reuse the data, means clearly define it or also lots, speed up origin license review. So who thinks that reducing times of lawyers costs is good? Everyone, right? 
and then avoiding redoing scans. So how much you can reduce about to avoiding a lot of things that you're doing, redoing and redoing every time. Sometimes twice, three times in the same company then. That's exactly the question. This is hard to overcome lawyers objection to sharing data. Yeah, this is our job. This is like even the guy that is fr frantic is typing there. <laughs> See, yes, using sharp GPT. So, yeah, okay. So the, same, the thing is that uh, it's our job to actually go and try to explain and teach the lawyers about this detail. It's not easy. I've been doing a lot of times there. I, I finally reach our, lab, our lawyers there at my company there. And I'm happy that one of them knows how to code in FreeBSD, so it helps a lot. But then how I can trust about the standard scan and curations. It's everything about peer review. We're not talking that I will trust any information for the other company, but I can have in several peer curated reviews of several companies, and I can say that this looks like the same, this is something there, so we can actually start to trust better your code because several other people right, arrive on the same, the same conclusion that you, even being a different company. It means that you're not wrong about that, but you're, what you're doing is correct there. And what the motivation and easy for public data sharing? Yes, it's pretty obvious there. It's, well, let's say that uh, on the next slide, we're talking about one important thing. That's where we go there. But imagine that if everyone can actually make it, this data, share it for the open source part. What can you do with this data? So we open the data there and then free as open license there and then Open community curated force package has a knowledge base. Wait, we have a knowledge base. What this knowledge base can provide? Imagine that the companies are uh, asking about a snippet scan, and then usually there's several companies selling to you a snippet scan database. Will you do it better? And what happens if you actually you have every single open source software that we use completely shared data and open theirs instantly in a matter of days? We could have the completely open source internet database in the same way, completely ready to do a snippet scan without asking anyone. Every company builds thousands of softwares every day there. If you do it one single time and then make it share it, we instantly can have an, a secure peer reviewed snippet scan database everywhere for everyone. And you don't need any more redoing these things because it's the same software as long that you have the proper protocol there. So, and then there's the last one thing there's. Centralized approach does not work well. Yes, that's correct. Too big to share, out of date, and lack of trust centralized control. That's correct. But in the, as long that the information that is coming, it's shared there, we can replicate for everyone. It means that we just create a replication database that we can create, can be provided. That's why is the model for decentralized, centralizing works. So this is something that I added there, normalize, normalize the data. And so it's, we've been working in a, in a white paper for a long time there and, and made the draft available today about single source of truth there. The data need to follow some standards but we cannot simply go to XKCD and say, oh, I have a standard that will make everything okay. And then you can create another standard in the pile of this. This doesn't work. And the logical data should be common for everyone, but agnostic. We cannot tell to the, to the, uh, no, to the company what to do. But you say that this is actually the type of data that you need to do. How to do it? It's completely different. It's up to you. But we just say that this way. So. We decentralizing the data at the point that you have a gateway, a common gateway that says, we want to retrieve the packages. If you want to retrieve the packages from your Oracle database, from your Postgres database, for your object component, or whatever system that's inside, behind, you don't care. You ask it about getting information. And that's exactly what you want a gateway for this. So we give the liberty for the side of development 
to choose exactly how it, they want to do it there. We, we give the liberty for the owner of data how actually you want to keep this on their site. We just say that this is the gateway, use the gateway, and then you choose this once. We are not blocking. This is exactly one of the key points that is what's difficult today when doing. We are not blocking uh, anyone to do it exactly what they want. And we are not blocking any existing application today to change it for a new standard. No. We just create a formalized gateway that is, is, can be adaptable for anyone as long as everyone communicates. So every application can communicate to this gateway. It don't need to know anything about elsewhere. It don't need to even make all applications understand each other. It's, it's a heavily complex thing, but it's the only way that you can create an official data lake for this. So license is different of security. This is the one problem that is we are confronting very well. So when we started this once, the whole CVE and vulnerability scans and supply chain attacks, other things didn't exist. We are talking both of legally part and how actually you have legal part to deliver the product, other things. And then boom, supply chain becomes a trendy thing and becomes the most important. And then suddenly there's things like OpenSSF become a big monster there that eats everything. And then FOSS projects that's doing different documentation for this simply is not there yet. So we slowly have a lot of projects that work when it's completely vulnerability scan. We can see things like dependency track. You can see things like a lot of databases for, uh, for vulnerability there. And we have CVEs, two versions of CVEs and nomenclatures. It's still not enough there because people simply not assign numbers there. It's, it's still there a mess. And then it's the same tools for everything. Every time it's exactly, we are doing exactly the same thing, but the usage is different there. And then what is talking in the beginning, we have expectations of convergence. When it happens, it's already happening there, but it's, it's a chaotic uh, part. And this is we simply cannot, say when this actually we got in the right path. So this is until the advice to OSPOS there, handle both domains and adapt your language to its constituent persona. We are talking different for different people here. And it's, it's difficult. Uh, it, it's really difficult because there, the vision of every time for these things is very centered focus there. So every time some people talk, it talks about their domain there and as a separate things. And we saw that is already not anymore separated. We have everything related to project. Right now, only the most important things is compliance, license, and now security there. But pretty sure that we, something else will come in that when you crack at this once. So it's, it's something difficult to do. So license compatibility, this is difficult. That's everyone knows about the matrix that's coming from there that's matrix coming from Osado, matrix that's coming from license DB, and there's flicked everything in mind. That's first of things, the interpretation of a license is already different for the companies. Every company takes the interpretation differently. Every lawyer team takes the interpretation differently. And now we need tools that actually adapt interpretations of then of compatible license. There's some clear cases that, for example, Eclipse Foundation showing exactly where Eclipse license is compatible, where Apache or other things. But we are talking about 200, 300 different licenses there. It simply cannot be parsing. Not AI can do that. AI can create new license, of course, uh, out of the box. But it simply lawyer's language there that need to be said, so how this actually adapted. A simple example of how is public domain source code is previewed here in North America and in the European Union, it's completely different. They treat the code different. So it's in Europe, public, uh, public domain is basically a minefield. Here is completely accepted as use it and completely not, but there we go. It's, it's simply there. So, what this, you know, these details about this explains mostly about how these things is done. 
So we have tools, we have a common agreement for this and how it goes. We're trying to, for, uh, on the open source tooling on Fosden, uh, we try to talk in a way that you can make it these tools talking to each other there and starting to use in a common sense, but this is difficult. And this is something that is, I, I honestly, this is my personal opinion there, will hardly be achieved because it would be complete, completely something related to your company this decisions there. It will become your open source handbook and points. We have tools that can help you to get in there, but exactly decisions about the compatibility will come from your legal team. And inside the snippet mesh is exactly what I said before. If you actually, this lot of database, do you need this huge databases you need to pay there? You need to actually put in this time and cash to actually store a huge amount of data. You know that snippeted database, it's a lot of big than simply license scanning there. Uh, this is a big question there. Does, uh, some companies are completely fine to, to, to feel free and relax it to pay in someone else to actually test your code. But it's not true. We, we never know about exactly this. So there we go, this. Domains are abandoned by commercial vendors. So for example, everyone using the SNCC there and has spun off FOSS ID to use their one. So Synops is mostly abandoned Protex and it goes and goes and goes. We cannot, it, it's simple that when this is becoming not viable and the commercial vi viability dies, the companies of course jump for the next trend, next wave. And we becomes in their hands or there because of open source. But then it comes the next question, the preferred one, AGI, artificial general intelligence. We are not there in artificial general intelligence. But make snippets more relevant to useless at the same time because, oh, I, I saw this, I saw that, I created a snippet, I saw this in their code, it match looks like there. Can you honestly say, let's uh, simple things. I, as a long time developer, there's this more than 20, 20 years working in open source. You, I cannot say, come, someone come to you, this is snippet code is problematic because this or that. I say, how you can tell to me that the snippet code is problematic without telling me the origin and why it becomes this, this is problematic and why actually you, you reusing this with, with this license is problematic. It simply don't tell you. Is this show you are you, this show to you that you are using something, and then it purely speculative. You simply don't you simply uh, decided to do. Oh, okay, you are using this, but we are fine. How you are fine, or we are not fine because you're using GPL. From how you know? Usually, we don't have this information there. It's not well formatted because it's different for everyone. It's always different there. So. Code matching can, can speed up the analysis. Yeah, find the big rocks first. We have some things like match code that is appearing right now. It's coming with vulnerable codes. Uh, and maybe this is, could be a good idea to think about it, creating a global matching snippet scan database that becoming open source standard. It's an idea. So inside S-bombs. S-bombs are everywhere. That's mostly the bills of material there. Data quality, not much. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yep. Yeah, this is the most correct on this thing. So, yep. Yeah. I've been typing uh, in the Zoom chat the question. By the way, that's Mark Giese, the guy who's responsible for the license spec. <laughs> Our yeah. first chair who uh, drafted yeah. everything and brought 120 people together. Yeah. But this is completely correct. The, the bad actors doesn't care about that. Yeah. Yes, it's, an, it's mostly, an, and I, I raise another, another problem on, on this case specific. When it seems this, this information is not completely reliable, when the got is one, you have you got a false sense of security there, and, he, and usually this information reach uh, non-developer people first, and they say, okay, we saw this one, it's okay, it's fine, and let's go there. It's not it's not a technical guy, it's not the one that really developed the code, and usually the, let's be honest, we are far, far away from the developers on the, our companies. When they reach the part of we are starting to do in the snippet scan or scan the code, we are the guys that are not the developers of the application and everything. So it's, it's a huge burden for us to actually go in to understand everything. We need to understand the whole code of the company. And uh, of course, this is impossible. This, uh, the, you, can, you can be the super programmer, we never understand the entire code there doesn't exist. This person doesn't exist. So that's just the some point that uh, we need to involve more people and, and companies don't want to. Companies don't want to talk to each other. Why I want to waste time of my development team to, to do this analysis? And then it did pass by there. So this information is completely dangerous. It's your correct one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we can do in a very interesting uh, reference for this, an example how actually not the snippet itself, but quality of code and, and this evolved. It's a very good and bad uh, example. It's a, it's a Linux kernel code since the beginning there, because it, the hierarchy of how it goes, there's depending how the, goals, uh, the, the code and the layers are, are merged up and up, people get angry and angry and more angry until you reach Linux Turbo and angry to say it's about the, how the things is completely, sorry for the word, shit, and goes, goes down to fix theirs. So it's barely difficult to actually merge something that is really bad because it has peer reviews by parameters there. But it's, it's a very hard case there. To, nowadays, today, we cannot do in review code. It's too much. It's really too much. And we don't have one single person to go in there. And that's why you're trying to automate, and then it goes in this level. No. So going back to what's bombs, yeah. That's, you know, we can create S bombs directly from a repository from GitHub. We don't know about the data quality. Or let's go in a different way. We can generate as bone for almost every single commercial tool and false com compliance tools today. Every single one. Because companies saying to them, we need an S bone. And, and everyone, even don't understand exactly what they're producing, are doing that. So it's, if you go to your um, let's say, your software package management repository, it generates for you your components an SBOM. And if you go to your software editage software or your proprietary scan scanner, it generates you SBOMs. Uh, you know that the quality of data is good because every single one tells to you that, oh, we generated that, it's very good. No, sorry, not. It's 99% of the time the resulting S bombs doesn't pass for even the SPDX or the Cyclone DX validation methods. And why is that? It's because it's incomplete. It's because it's inaccurate. It's because you don't have all the data there. No single application can produce all the data necessary to have a completely well formed S bomb. We need several steps. That's why automation there. So that's. This, is, this is test actually existed. Two out of 50, this is made by Thomas Timbella, two out of 50 plus 
softwares are effective and generate effective consuming as moms. It means that everyone is providing you today at least for more than 50 different applications a bad as bomb. And that's the says and, and the company says we are conformant, we are generate as bombs. Sorry, no. If you please tell me why you actually did the they, and then the answer is, mm, I don't know. Simple that. So, over engineer and under specification. This is a lot of talk that has happened everywhere there. And it says, ignore the SPDX and Cyclone DX field and a browse package URL. This is pure Philip idea there. But the thing is that I would say I will go there in the same way. Please ignore the, the fight between S bomb formats because the data to generate these formats is the same. So make your data better. If you want to generate some output, it's up to you. But the data is the same for both. It's the same component, it's the same project, it's the same dependencies, everything. If you write an A, B, or C format, who cares? The data is important there. So SBOM is just a reporting format. Go ahead. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of a nuance there. So I've looked at the, uh, a lot of the ones that were generated for SPDX and when they were invalid. Some of these, like the, like, uh, the GitHub issues uh, when they produce the SBOM, they're actually relatively easy to fix. There's little format issues. We've reported them. The data is actually not too bad. But they need to fix. They need to fix. Yeah, exactly. And that's the key. Yeah, so this is one thing that is really, we are really missing in the spine is that we don't have a composition part. So it's, it's okay for several tools writing the S-bombs part there. But then after you get all the results, why not get a better composition on those ones? And then the thing, the thing is that no one actually says how this composition should be done. Yeah, but that's, that's, let's say, for example, that's, we, we, yeah, going back to the, to the very, very first one slide, eating in our own dog food. Remember that today we have two ways to validate SPDX as official SPDX. There's, we have both Python and Java there, and the both ones are not working exactly the same each other. They're close enough, but then how you tell which one is valid because it's coming from the same there. So it, it, the thing is that uh, it's, it's, it's becoming difficult there. We, as we need to do validation, this is in, in, my, in, my, in my company now, one thing that we really go into the pipeline and we'll say that when everyone provides us an SPDX document, the first thing that they enter in the pipeline is a validation. If it's not valid, we block it, say it's goodbye, go back and make it right. Because this way we can actually guarantee at least it's valid. I, again, pay attention to this. We are validating and say they've improved the quality. We not say that the information inside is right. We don't know how to say it there. We can lie, you can have a spawn that is lying the information, but the, the, first, the first starting point is theirs. Yes, the spawn is validated. It doesn't mean that the information is correct. So we still need to analyze this file later. It's just, one thing is get the right file, other thing is that really valid file, different things. So, and follow up on collaborations and opportunities. Yeah, we have, we need collaborations between all the open source tools. So we're talking about today and it's possibly if you can talk with false lightings because SW60, a project that I work, is basically the same, it's direct competitor about false light, but we're treating the same things, same regular data, other things, different approaches. So it's one kind of collaboration. We already talked on the open source tooling uh, uh, project there about Flick to Sada where mine collaboration, it goes to one single one, in fact, everyone trying to do three times the things. 
create a live inventory of force tools and their capabilities. Yes. That's the one that we're trying to work. If you ever want to watch the force light morning presentation, this is the famous, uh, famous map of all the open source tooling that we made long time ago there. But we still don't have a live uh, representation of this. We are lacking this. And I, I think we lack, we lack uh, people to do that. Everyone is so busy to do this one, uh, it's complex to do. Share approach, this is already started and a very, very good example. I can go for the ORT community. If you look in there, the, for example, there's a share approach on how to do the automation of completely ORT. It's public, they did it on GitLab, they did it on how to do it in GitHub, they show it how to do it in Jenkins. If you actually start to sharing more of this, it make automation very easy for everyone and make components part. We, knew it, we need to share there. This define a standard schema for two to two technical scan data sharing. This is, this, this is a really key things. This uh, is, as I said before, a single source of true is the one that we actually think there. And data, exchange, exchange and create data. Please look for clear defined at also lot projects. That's one idea. Again, we are not saying that everything is to be de facto or become perfect there. But we pretty much have an understanding of how it goes. If you find something better, let's go there, but let's go in a common thing that can everyone share. So credits, of course, that a special thanks to Philippe because we were supposed to be here, but he not able, asked me to do the talk. And this, the content is CC by SA, so you can reuse the content everywhere. And this content is being shared and remixed since ever on the last seven years there. It just improved it. So seven years ago, we don't have security vulnerabilities. Now it's trendy part and it goes away. Thank you. That's, I talk a lot, sorry. Yeah. <laughs>